Sniper wheel alignments, Mark II. Welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. For those guys that have been following the channel for a while, thank you very much. But one of our all time classics is the Sniper wheel alignment. Now you may have noticed that over the last few years we've slowly updated the lighting, the camera, the audio. So the videos have been getting crisper and a little bit easier to follow along. So today is a bit of a remake of one of the classics, the Sniper wheel alignment. Okay, so for those of you guys that don't have a set of snipers, I highly recommend it. It's one of the go-to tools that you're gonna use so much. Other than your wheel spanner and your tire pressure gauge, this should be next on the list. So the snipers come in a little box like this. Now, if no one's explained to you, when you open them up, the two magnets are in the center. It makes it very easy to get the sniper in and out. You can see here that the two magnets are facing each other. The reason for that is, if once you remove the sniper, if you put them back in the box backwards, they will fit. But what happens is the sniper gets locked in this part of the box and it makes it really hard to get them out. So that's a common rookie mistake. So if you're new to snipers, don't put them in backwards. When you're putting the snipers away, make sure that both the magnets face each other. So remove both of the snipers out of your box, just like so. And in here, some instructions, a spare set of batteries, a magnet, and a ruler. So the build quality in the sniper product is awesome. A few years ago, we had some problems with the laser diodes. Now that has been rectified and over 10,000 sets later, we get to have a warranty on this magnificent product. Another thing that you may or may not notice is that these little houses for the magnets are actually sintered and stainless steel and they're super heavy duty. Now you can bang these on the stubs and you won't bruise the magnet area. Now it's super critical because you want these two faces sitting perfectly on your stub axle so that your laser alignment is not inaccurate. So you can see at the top of the sniper, the forward arrow. Over here at the back, we've got the camber positive and negative. And then down the bottom, you've got the toe in or toe out. So shooting the lasers across the car, we can see here that as we move the laser up, on the positive range and then down onto the negative range. And then you can change your toe in and toe out. Now you're gonna do all that on the go-kart and we're gonna show you how to do that by changing the tie rods for the toe and the caster camber adjusters for the camber. Okay, so now we've got the sniper set up on the car and we wanna check the wheel alignment. So like we were saying earlier, we've got uh, V-shaped magnets here. Now on a Tony cart, they're gonna go straight onto the stub axle. So to install the sniper, we can just use the magnets. For other carts, you might have to remove the wheel. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that the snipers are level. So just adjust your sniper like so. And to turn the sniper on, simply turn the red knob to the right. So now that you've got the sniper set up on the car, we're gonna check the wheel alignment. Before we adjust the toe out, we wanna make sure that the steering is central. So the first thing you can do to double check your steering is get a piece of white paper and line the two lasers above each other. Now, you can see if you turn the wheel left or right, that the snipers move away from each other because they're obviously on the stub axles. And then if they meet right in the middle, these ones are absolutely perfect, as you'd expect. It's a brand new go-kart. So for the next check, what we're gonna do is get the little sniper ruler out and put it on the steering column. And then we're gonna turn the steering wheel until the laser changes directions. So we go from 30 down to 22, back up to 30. So 22 is the highest number, or the lowest number, we can get to on this side. Move the steering wheel to the other side. Now you can do the same on this side. Turn the steering wheel down, hits the 22, comes back up, goes down, hits the 22, goes back. Okay, so this car was set up perfectly, it's brand new. But say your go-kart, you're doing your sweep angle check and you had a different measurement on your ruler, say 27 millimeters and 20. You're gonna to wanna to adjust one side down and the other side up. And to do that, use a 10 and a 13 millimeter on a Tony cart and 
loosen off the rose joint nut on both sides. Just remember one is a left hand thread. You can tell by the little markings on the nut here that this is the left hand thread. So it undoes back to front. So you can see here we're at the 20 millimeter zone. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna adjust the tie rod now that we've loosened them off. So that reads on the 22 line. Okay, and then we're gonna sweep the angle through again and just double check our lasers. Perfect. And now we wanna check the other side. So then we're gonna check the other side and you can see we're a little bit high. So we're just gonna adjust this little tie rod until it's on the 22. Another little check you can do, using your little sniper magnet, we're gonna put that down there on the steering column support bracket. And we're just gonna put the little sniper ruler there and the magnet's gonna hold it. So now just with your lasers zeroed out, we're gonna just check the caster across the cart to see if the cart's bent. Turn them all the way to the left. That's 186. Then turn the steering wheel all the way to the right. 186. This cart's perfect. If you've got a variation in your measurements across the go-kart, you can get that back by changing your caster pill one hole across the, across the chassis, left to right. If it's more than that, it could be a good chance that cart's been bent and you need to take it to somebody to get it straightened. So now that you've checked your steering and you've got the same sweep side to side, you're ready to start doing your wheel alignment. A little note before you start working on the car is that you want to make sure the area you're about to work on is super clean. And the reason is, you can see here we've wedged a piece of paper, double folded underneath the laser. And you can see that there's almost over a millimeter of variation just from a tiny piece of paper. So if you imagine you had a little piece of rock or dirt uh, stuck between the laser and your stub axle, how much error you'd get in your wheel alignment. So you can see here we've got a little bit of toe out because the laser is in front of the reference line, which is the center there and there. And then to go to toe in, we're just gonna adjust the tie rod until we had one millimeter of toe in. And it would be the same for the other side. So in go-karting, it's pretty rare that we'd run one millimeter of toe in. Most of the times we're running from neutral to toe out. So now that we've set our toe out, we just gotta lock it off on the tie rods. So what I like to do is push both tie rod ends in the one direction. Turn the nuts roughly to touch the tie rod. Then holding the tie rod stationary, tighten one side, then tighten the other side. Make sure you do both sides of the cart. Okay, so now that we've set our steering and our toe out, everything's perfect, we're gonna change our camber. Now, once you've done all these settings, it's really worthwhile to go back and double check all these things again and just make the micro adjustments as necessary. So now I'm gonna show you how to use the lasers to change your camber. So most go-karts have a caster pill similar to this and to adjust it, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is loosen off the kingpin using an allen key for the top and a ring spanner for the bottom. These will generally be pretty tight. So you might have to use your T-bar on the long side first and then back it off until you hear the stub axle drop in the C-section and repeat for the other side. Before we can make any adjustments, we need to remove the locking screws. So now with the pointy nose pliers, we're going to adjust the cam bar adjuster in a anti-clockwise direction over on the engine side. One, two holes. So we've gone from this hole to this hole. So that's given us positive camber because you can see that the laser has moved from here all the way up to here. So we've increased positive camber. So we're in positive camber and we've had enough of that. We've decided we want some negative camber. The track's got sticky or whatever. So we're gonna rotate our caster adjuster the same in the opposite direction. And now we have negative camber. You can see that we've moved the laser from the positive camber here 
into the negative camber here. And then you simply reinstall the locking screw. And do up the kingpin again and you're all good. So generally speaking, if the car's not responding on the way into the corners when you're going to start increasing your positive camber or reducing your negative camber, and if the car's turning in really well, it's really responsive, say over responsive on the way into the corner, we're going to reduce the positive camber and increase the negative camber. But what you really want to do is you want to go to your local tracks and start to learn these things for yourself by experimenting. And to do that, you're going to need this tool. It's a fantastic tool for doing wheel alignments. I highly recommend it. Also too, as a bit of a side note, sometimes I run positive camber on one wheel and negative on the other, depending on the type of track. It's not common, but we do do it sometimes. Whenever you're doing front end geometry changes, it's super important that you double check everything because when you change the caster, it changes the camber. When you change the camber, it changes the toe. As the car wears and the bearings aren't brand new, you're gonna get little variations. So you always wanna double check your wheel alignments after you've performed a change and before you go back on, out on the track just to make sure it's super perfect. So that's how you use sniper wheel aligners to change your toe in and toe out and your positive negative camber. If you're liking the video, please give us a thumbs up. It really means a lot. Also too, while you're at it, you might as well subscribe and turn on those notifications and follow us at Power Republic on Instagram and Facebook or go to our website www.powerpublic.com.au Check out our amazing Racing Rituals tutorial series. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.